Hey guys, Nomad Master here. Welcome to my nighttime tour for Murkwater. So I'm going to take you guys over to the swamp meet first this time. It's about 7 o'clock right now, so we have about an hour left until the settlers leave their posts. So let's go check out some of those stores before they close. And then I'll take you guys to the bars afterwards. Okay, so here's the swamp meet. Let's go over to Corner Cuts real quick. And we'll go check that out since we didn't see that in the daytime tour. If you guys haven't seen the daytime tour, feel free to check that out after this. Alright, so here's Corner Cuts. There's Joan. She's the That's shopkeeper here. She has sinks back here so that customers can choose to pay extra if they want to get their hair washed before they get a haircut. She also sells some hair accessories as well. And I know I said we'd do the bars last, but actually let's do those now because those get a little too crowded when people get off of work. So let's go to Quantum Bar first. So the Quantum Cocktail Lounge is a very small lounge, but they have some board games and stuff that the settlers can play. They can also buy some pastries and donuts from the Eatertronic. So this one, in a sense, is a little bit higher quality than the pub next door. And they have the Nuka Quantum soda machine in the middle there, which draws in a lot of people. And then this is the Quagmire. So this is the pub that was here before Quantum Bar came. And there's the bartender there. So as you can see, it's a lot bigger than the Quantum Bar. So let's go to the butcher shop next. So the butcher shop is a very important place on purge day because after they kill all of the Meyer lurks, they then have to take them apart and separate all their meats and eggs and everything. And then it is sold right here in this room. So this is a shop that's open year round. Most of the time you'll find Meyer lurk meat, but every so often you might be able to find something different. Let's go over to clothing essentials before they close. All right, here we are. The shopkeeper here's name is Denise. She displays her clothes on the shelves on the wall there. A lot of the inventory in these shops are pretty small because Merkwater is a small town and they don't need tons of stuff like you'll see in uh, some of my bigger settlements or city settlements. So let's go over here. This is one of the defense post areas for purge day or if there's any other kind of threat going on. This is what it looks like at night. This is one of the scarier ones because it's so dark. Don't know what's gonna pop out of those bushes. <laughs> and then here's the farm area. So the farm is separated by that bridge. It's kind of like on an island because of the way the walls are built around it. So that's the only way in and out. All right, so coming up here is the Moonlight Walk. This is definitely best experienced at night. So the Moonlight Walk is built by the settlers. It leads you directly to the entrance of the swamp meet. Here's another defensive post area. And next, let's check out Medical Supplies. So Medical Supplies is run by Ruth and Linda. So Ruth is Linda's daughter, and this is Ruth over here. She sells a lot of different Lost chems, back. and then she also sells glow leaf. And there's Linda's area over here, it's the surgical area. So this is where all the settlers in Merkwater are getting their glow leaf from. And then next, let's check out one of these homes. This is one of the nicer homes, just because it's located in a safer part of the settlement and it's right across the way from medical supplies. But still, though it is a nicer home, it's not very nice compared to some of the wealthier settlements of the Commonwealth. Next, let's go check out a home that has a back porch attached to it. So then we can kind of get a feel for what it's like at night if you were to get attacked. So I think, yeah, this one has a back porch on it. All right, here we are. So it looks like they're in the middle of making dinner. And then here's the back porch area. So it looks like, yeah, they have some weapons out here. So you can grab some weapons and grab some explosives out of the box and defend your home or fight off whatever's on the other side of the wall. All right, let's move on. So next I'm gonna show you guys the railroad safe house. So the railroad safe house is actually located right here in the middle of the settlement. Though the settlers don't realize it's a safe house, they just think it's a regular home. This is what it looks like inside. They've got a kitchen area, 
They've got a desk and computer area. They also have bunk beds and some lockers and weapons. Everything they might need if they're in hiding. And then next, let's check out the supply shack. The supply shack is the first and oldest structure in the settlement. I posted about this a couple years ago when I first built it, but it deserves another look just because it's been so long. This is what started the whole settlement. It hasn't changed much. Next, let's go check out the mayor's office. So the mayor's office is attached to the power room, and the power room is built at the back of the office to give it the most protection. So once you come to the mayor's office, you'll be greeted by a receptionist, and she'll ask you to take a seat until the mayor is ready to see you. But since the office is closed right now, we're just going to go take a look and see what's going on. So once you come back here, you'll notice that there is a large room that houses the conference area and then the mayor's desk. So Mayor McClintock sits here and then her conference room is actually very important. This is where she meets with the Minutemen to talk about infrastructure and trade and various other things as well. So this is the power room. The power room houses a single fusion generator which provides power for the entire settlement. It's guarded at all times, and maintenance is provided if needed. Alright, next, let's go and check out some more of the homes near the edge of the settlement. So the home we're going to be looking at is a typical Murkwater home. It's an open floor plan. It kind of feels like a studio apartment. This one has a balcony as well. And here we are. So this one has a small kitchen attached to a bedroom area. It looks like they're able to fit a table in there as well. This is their patio area, which they defend on purge day. There's some of their weapons and ammo. And then you'll notice that a lot of the settlers like to mount the creatures that they kill as their prizes. Next, let's go check out the McClintock house. So this is where the mayor lives. She grew up in this house, though it was destroyed at one point and rebuilt. This is what the new home looks like. It's much better. It has running water, a full kitchen, and there's a front and a back porch. It's the only home in the settlement that has both a front and back porch. So this is where she defends her home on purge day. She has a huge hill in her backyard there. So that can make defending her house very difficult on Purge Day because of the close combat factor. By the way, if anybody is interested in the story for this settlement, you can click on the link in the description below. That pretty much concludes my video for today, but before I go, I'm going to pull out my mods list and have you guys take a look. So, as you guys can see, I do not use any mods when building my settlements, so you can make something like this by just using the DLCs, the Creation Club, and the Vanilla Game. Thank you all so much for watching.